This podcast is sponsored by Inside Out Group, the specialists in high risk and challenging filming and time lapse, covering health and safety videos for rail, construction, and infrastructure projects nationwide. It so happened at that time that um, Decker, Sydney Decker, was in Brisbane. Um, I'd known Sid from my days in aviation, of course, because he was he was a pilot and he, he was heavily involved in crew and cockpit resource management at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I phoned Sid up and, and said, um, I'm here. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on where we might take our safety program. And he said, it just happens that we have a meeting tomorrow in Melbourne. Yeah. Get yourself down there and we'll have a discussion about it. So, you know, serendipity, you know, if I'd phoned him the following day, he'd have been Melbourne, perhaps this opportunity would have been lost. So I went down, I, I flew down to Melbourne and even the day of the meeting, I'm, I'm thinking, do I really do, do I want to do this? Is it going to be a waste of time? Anyway, I, I went along to this meeting. There were 40 of us at the meeting. Um, and it was a general discussion to start with about how we could advance safety in, in Australia and the problems of, of, of safety in Australia. So actually, I was there to give an external perspective on whether Australian safety was good or not. Um, and I didn't think it was. The Australians did. Um, but I didn't think it was that good. I think I thought they had a problem with things like design, safety and design. I thought the big issues with the lack of a, a sort of CDM approach. They had no CDM approach. That they had all sorts of nightmares with, with temporary works. Um, so I didn't think it was that good, and I, and I said so. By the afternoon, there was only five of us left. There was myself, uh, Sydney, Kelvin Gen, a lawyer called Michael Tuma and a guy called Daniel Hummerdahl, who now works for the New Zealand um, Safety Authority. Yeah. And we took, it, we, we took it upon ourselves there to take Decker's academic work and, and operationalize it. Um, so that was the first forum. Well, it was the first forum where safety differently as a term was coined. Yeah. Um, it was actually safety dash differently to begin right. with. Yeah. Um, and that was going to be the name of the website, Safety Dash Differently. Um, but the internet doesn't like dashes um, in website names. Yeah. And so it just became Safety Differently. Um, and so it lost some of the, the kind of nuances that we wanted in, in that translation. Mm-hmm. Um, because what it was meant to be, it was meant to be a forum where we could just discuss different ways of creating safety. It wasn't meant to be one way that replaced the old way. It was meant to be a platform upon which numerous different ways of doing safety could should and could be discussed. Yeah. With these three principles as the backbone. So, you know, people are not the problem, the, the solution. Safety is not the absence of accidents. It's the capacity of the organization to manage change. And safety is not um, uh, a, a bureaucratic activity. It's a moral responsibility. So we took those three principles away and we built um, a playbook that you could give to project leaders. So a replacement for the existing management system, which was built on safety different, differently principles. And despite the initial uh, reluctance and resistance uh, to use that, Langs took it on with both hands in, in Australia. Yeah. Um, and you know the biggest critics of it at the time became its biggest supporters. Qantas took it on board and ran with it number of other Australian organizations took it on board and, and ran with it. And I brought it back to Europe when I came back with Langs um, a couple of years later. So that was, I, I, that was, for me, that was the most courageous things that Langs ever did. 